Have you heard about all the latest Microsoft Teams features dropping this September? In this video, we'll uncover seven new features in Microsoft Teams that you need to pay attention to coming out from the latest September update. If you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime, where we're on a mission to save people time at work happening to use Microsoft 365. So if you're interested in finding out more about all of the Microsoft 365 apps, including Microsoft Teams, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out, which is coming out at least every week. We've got some free training on Microsoft Teams and a free book coming out. So check out some of the links in the description below if you need more help after this video. So let's get into it. Number one is you can now rename the general channel, which has been a long time coming. And I think you can already delete the general channel if you don't want now, which also you couldn't do for quite a long time. And now if you've got something more pertinent than general, you can rename that general channel. Number two, sort of related, is that you can improve your onboarding flow as people come into a team by recommending some channels that they join. So if you follow our advice on Microsoft Teams structure, which if you don't know what that is, you can check out some free Teams training in the link below, as well as a free book if you just want to read through and uh, get some either comms or some other ideas, or if you just prefer reading than watching, you can get our free book in the description below as well, if that's out at the time you watch this video. But if you follow our advice, there probably isn't that many channels that you want a lot of people to follow, because you should have channels by sort of avatar, for want of a better word, for a specific person doing a specific job, but they should have a set of channels. For someone else in another department, they should have a set of channels. So it's probably unlikely you can have many channels to recommend to everybody that they follow. But ironically, general might be one of them, as well as maybe some well-being or some other stuff that actually is, is applicable to the whole team. If you are working in chat, which we usually recommend against because you'll end up losing stuff, so if you overuse it, which a lot of organizations do overuse group chats, they've now renamed files to be shared, which is actually useful because whether you share a link or a document or whatever you're sharing will appear in that list for you. That's number three. Number four is if you paste some images into a chat or a post now, instead of having like a big picture one underneath each other, it does a little, nice little preview for you and just displays those pictures side by side to take up less space. Number five is you can now turn Copilot off in meetings, either for a specific meeting or your admin can do it for all the meetings or by user. Strangely, you can also have it like chat where you can have it only during the meeting or during and after the meeting. And I get why that's important with chat going on the meeting because you don't get pinged about loads of stuff and people carry on going through you know, the meeting chat for ages after the meeting's finished and it's like just pinging, pinging, pinging you, especially if it's an all hands meeting or something like that. But surely Copilot is like, well, if it's important to have a Copilot on, then you would want it after the meeting as well. So you can go back and interrogate it and find the notes. If you if it's important that it's off because it's a, a meeting you don't want recorded or you know people to go back to, I get that as well. But only during the meeting, I'm not really sure why I'd use that. So if you think that's useful or not, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on that one. Number six is that you you can now get your Teams meeting artifacts in Outlook after the meeting. So all of the re intelligent recap, if you've got access to that, either through a Teams premium license or a Microsoft Copilot 365 license, you'll have some meeting recap and summaries done for you in Teams. And then you can go back and see those direct from Outlook when you go back into a previous meeting, as well as if you're using the loop components for your meeting notes, that'll appear in Outlook as well. And lastly, number seven is if you are using Microsoft 365 to manage desk bookings, which seems a bit of a faff, to be honest to me. If you uh, set that up rather than use a third party service, Microsoft Places has also gone a little bit quiet as well, which uh, is interesting. But yeah, if you have got bookable desks set up through the Microsoft 365 tenant, your admin's done that, and they've done something to scan which peripherals are on each desk, when you go to that desk and plug something in, Teams will automatically set your location to that desk and book it for you as well. So let me know if your organization is using that in the comments below. So that's the seven top new features coming out from September Microsoft Teams update. So let me know your favorite new feature in the comments below. Before you go, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us in the algorithm as just does watching this video. Subscribe for more insights or watch one of these videos next, which might help you out in your Microsoft 365 productivity journey. If you need more help for your whole organization, consider booking a call using the link in the description below or check out some of our other resources that are also in the description. Thanks for watching so far and see you in the next one.